All right, I see more people have joined us. So I'm just gonna make this my formal hello to everybody. My name is Kristen Bands, and I am the manager of network engagement for the Teen Science Cafe Network. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we have a webinar for you uh, on new resources for marketing your Teen Science Cafe with our partners at the National Girls Collaborative Project. I'm gonna turn it over to them. They'll introduce themselves and get rolling. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Thanks, Kristen. I'm going to share my screen now, pull up our slides here. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to, um, as Kristen said, the webinar um, for some new resources uh, for marketing your Teen Science Cafe. I'm going to jump into some background information about the National Girls Collaborative Project. Um, some of you may be familiar with what we do. I see some familiar names on the call, um, but we are an organization and our vision is to support and create STEM experiences that are as diverse as the world we live in. Um, we work a lot with uh, girls, creating more opportunities for girls in STEM, uh, but we also work with all youth um, and try to uh, create and amplify opportunities um, for all uh, youth to engage in STEM. Um, and we do provide lots of um, great, mostly um, almost entirely free resources. So if you are interested in any of these, uh, we encourage you to go to our website and check these out. Um, we have a national webinar series where we um, present relevant topics, um, and we have speakers who share about um, their research, about their work, um, and then we also um, have uh, some other kinds of webinars like town halls with um, our youth advisory board, which Candid will tell you a little bit more about in a bit. Um, we also have a monthly newsletter um, that provides free resources um, professional development opportunities, uh, upcoming events um, uh, in STEM, um, and some sometimes uh, grant opportunities uh, and research and reports. Um, so that is a free resource that we would encourage you to sign up for. Um, and on our website, you can also find um, exemplary practices, blog posts, um, statistics and research related to girls and women in STEM, uh, we also have research related to collaboration, uh, partnerships, and all sorts of other things. Um, and we also uh, work on a lot of educational programs, and we do a lot of marketing and social media um, for those programs, which we're going to tell you about today and um, offer some um, tips and resources, uh, hopefully, to help you. So just to introduce our team here um, my name is Emily Early. I am a senior program manager at the National Girls Collaborative Project, um, and I work on a lot of our educational programs. And then I'll turn it over to Candid to introduce herself. Hi, everyone. My name is Candid Mack. I'm the program snippets coordinator and youth advisory girl coach at NGCP. And I'll pass it over to Teresa. Thank you, Candid. Uh, my name is Raisa Rosado, and I'm the Director of Digital Communications for NDCP, and I handle everything like for social media, our e-news, and uh, our written content for our website. And also, uh, my position is a shared position, so if you are familiar with the Million Girls Moonshot, I also I am the Social Media Manager for the Million Girls Moonshot and STEM Next. Happy to be here today. Back to you, Emily. Thanks, Raisa. Thanks, Candid. Um, here is our agenda for today. We're going to start with a short icebreaker activity that in the chat. So if you have access to the chat, um, we'll encourage you to participate in that. Uh, Candid's going to talk to you a little bit about teens' interest today, which I'm sure you um, are very familiar with and is uh, top of mind for you uh, often as you're planning um, these events with, with your teens. Um, we're also going to talk to you about how to market to teen audiences based on their interests and um, where they're at. Uh, we'll provide some marketing resources to consider as you think about putting together a marketing plan. Um, and then we'll have some time at the end if you have any questions um, about anything we present or if we can help out with any of your um, sort of marketing planning. 
Uh, we do have a few goals for the webinar today as well. We hope that through this webinar, you will um, learn how to align your Teen Science Cafe marketing uh, with teens interest today. Um, you can discover a few, hopefully one or two new marketing strategies that can help you broaden your exposure for your cafe. Um, and then we hope you will be able to engage with some new resources as well that appeal to teens. So I'm going to pass it to Candid to start with the um, activity here at the beginning. Thanks, Emily. So we have a nice fun activity to break the ice, i.e. icebreaker. So if you can in the chat, can you please share something about what your interests were when you was a teen? I don't know how long ago that was, but we probably all had something that we love to do when we were um, back in our heyday. So you please share in the chat. And since I posed the question, I will share um, some of my interests. Um, one was I really loved cars. So I attended all the um, car shows in New York. I had race cars. I had a remote control car. So that was one of my interests. Wow. So we have basketball, sports and drawing, reading, coming in hot, uh, music. I was in a high school band. Katie, I wonder what um, instrument you played. Theater, Emily, swim team, biking, running around the woods. I actually done that myself, um, living in North Carolina for a year. I ran around several woods and got lost. I don't know if we can do that today. Being outside, nature, hiking, reading. Oh, clarinet. So thank you. These are some wonderful um, interests. I wonder if you're still um, pursuing those interests, if you're still hiking, you're still swimming, they carried on to your adulthood. That's um, awesome. Playing violin. violin. Uh, singing poorly at any karaoke night. I love that one. Awesome. So thank you for sharing. I think we can go to the next slide. So as I said earlier, uh, one of my roles at NGCP is that I'm the Youth Advisory Board Coach. And through my role as Youth Advisory, Youth Advisory Board Coach, I try to create an open and engaging at atmosphere. Um, actually, before I get to that, I just want to share a little bit about what um, Youth Advisory Board is. Um, we're a total of 38 members that meet virtually um, once a month, and we provide feedback on NGCP's initiatives, and we also provide uh, feedback to external organizations as well. And I just made one year as a youth advisor, real coach, and I had to learn a lot of things, and creating an open and engaging atmosphere was something that I had to learn through time, especially being virtual. So to create this atmosphere, the first thing I do is I ask how they're doing because we have some seniors, juniors, they, you know, from freshmen to sophomore years, they go through a lot. They're involved in a lot of activities outside of school. So I noticed that they really appreciated when I asked them how they were doing. And then afterwards, at the top of the meetings, I assign breakout rooms so they can have like intimate conversations. Since there's 38 members, I try to put like five to six in the room so they can get to know each other better. As I learned, once they know each other better, when we come into the main room and have open discussions, they feel more free to talk to each other because they have a little bit of um, familiarity with each other when in those breakout sessions. Um, also learn how to listen to youth needs and ideas. Um, when I first started, it was, I don't want to say me, 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 but it was more um, not asking what they wanted to do. It was more of me like assuming so during our meetings, I actually asked, like, what are some of the interests when it comes to town halls that we put together that I'll share a little bit later? I asked them, like, what are you interested in? And they let me know. I also asked them, how do you like to communicate? So that's how I learned how to communicate with youth, because I was struggling with, like, email communications where I'll send out an email and would it come back? I wouldn't get a response as fast. And they like to um, communicate via text. So we created a group me text chain. So we can go to the next slide as to 
learning about their interests. As I mentioned earlier, how I asked them, like, what are they interested in? Um, the three things that came up was artificial intelligence, climate change, and cyber cybersecurity. And the reason why I asked is because we produce town halls um, quarterly. And our first town hall, as you can see in the graphic, was our impact of impact on artificial intelligence to society um, because they were very curious about how artificial intelligence will not only affect our daily lives, but affect education, affect the, the wealth, wealth gap when it comes to jobs. So I was um, I was surprised that they were interested in that, but what mainly surprised me was the climate change. They are very concerned about climate change. So an example of this was we connected with the Smithsonian Science of Global Goals, and we basically um, created a focus group to give feedback on their curriculum that they'll produce in later this year. And I've learned how big climate change, um, how big that, how much that means to them. And then lastly, cybersecurity is a town hall that we'll be having um, in the upcoming weeks. And they wanted to know about privacy data and things of that nature. So those that's how I learned about the interest was through communication, understanding how they like to um, communicate with, listening to their needs. And that's how we came up with some of these topics. So I'd like to ask, what are some of the topics that have resonated with your youth at a recent Teen Science Cafe event? And you could please share that in the chat. Social justice, that's a big topic as well. Video game designing, yes, machine learning, aerospace, that's also a popular topic. Plastic ocean pollution. All about the brain, health and healthcare careers. Awesome. So I'm glad that you're able, I'm glad that you are familiar with some of the topics that um, your team are interested in. Interested in the solar eclipse at the moment. Yeah, that is a, I think that's coming up in the next couple of weeks, I believe, or next week. Awesome. But thank you for sharing from your interest. I will now pass it over to Raisa, who's going to share with you about marketing. Hi, um, thank you for joining us. Uh, so um, a lot of you, some of you may already know some of these strategies. Uh, I hope that uh, you find uh, some of this information helpful. Uh, some of you might not know uh, about these strategies, the strategies, but uh, one of the things that I always uh, said when you're trying to marketing uh, to market to a specific audience is like you have to take a step back and then uh first figure out what is your purpose uh what is it that you're doing this why is that you are focusing on this specific audience and then you can just uh structure your content around those key points uh and then how to uh, and leverage the unique aspects of for example, Teen Science Cafe Network, and what is it that appeal? What is it that Teen, uh, uh, teen Science Cafe Network has to appeal the teen demographic? Um, and then from there, you go and you structure how is gonna how are you gonna uh, uh, structure your marketing plan to uh, target a specific audience? Um, so first, uh, when you're trying to market yourself, I know that a lot of us don't like to talk about ourselves, but you have to let people know in an authentic way why what's your miss your mission and why is it that you're doing this and for who are you doing what you're what you do, um, and then stress out the important the importance of engaging teens uh, in science through your mission. Um, one of the things that um, I like to start it's you know highlighting the characteristics of the teen audience. Uh, first, we know that they are digital natives. Uh, digital platforms are really generational. 
uh, generations don't use the platforms in the same way that other people do. Like, I guess you can see that uh, it's in data. Uh, if you have a lot of people in, from different ages on your Facebook, you can tell that they use different platforms and they use it in a different way. Um, so we are dealing with teens. We they were born with these digital platforms. Uh, at least, uh, you know, older generations, millennials, we have to learn these new digital platforms and learn how to communicate and how to use them. And some of some gen some generations don't even evolve with these uh, new updates. These platforms are changing all the time. They're evolving and. Uh, some people get behind, but the teens are living this. They were born with this technology and they are, you know, aware of all the changes and the new ways of using and communicating uh, through the different platforms. Um, one of the things that, uh, one of the other things that uh, it's common in teens is like they do value authenticity. Uh, they know when you are not being authentic on social media, uh, they know they can catch very quickly what is, you know, fake on social media and other different platforms, even your website. Um, so they look for that honesty and real uh, relatability. Um, so, you know, for ex example, photos, they can tell, you know, what is a stock photo versus a photo that you took at one of your events. So when you're marketing uh, through digital platforms or even uh, printed and a flyer, so, you know, you can tell, uh, going with a more honest and authentic way to market is always more relevant to teens. Um, as you mentioned, uh, in teen interest, they are socially conscious. So they are concerned with global and social issues. So it is a, a great way to market Teen Science Cafe Network is to address this concern in a way that, uh, you know, they feel that you also care about these issues, not because they care, but because these are problems that affect our world, our planet and our community. Um, and also one thing that, uh, you know, they seek engagement, they seek interaction. So they want to be part of the conversation. They want to lead conversations. They know they are the future. So they are always looking for opportunities to engage, be part of the conversation and uh, opportunities to lead uh, events or part of the conversation as well. Um, you can go to the next slide, Emily. So once you identify who's your focus audience, that it will be teens this time. Uh, so uh, you need to understand that, you know, what, how they are, how they behave. Um, so again, going to the point that they are digital navy, uh, natives, they use the platforms in a different way that we do. Um, so you can try to uh, reach them. At, the best way is to reach them with they are and in a way that is relevant to them. Uh, for example, we know based on data about uh, social media users that uh, teens between uh, 14 and uh, 20, well, 26 is not teens, but you know, that age range, they are mostly on TikTok. They are on Instagram, but they don't post photos on the feed. They're, usually they use their Instagram stories more than a regular feed. They are on Snapchat, which they use that platform to communicate with each other. Um, and they uh, tend to follow uh, companies, organizations that are, you know, they care about stuff and a mission that they also care about. Um, and one thing is like they consume content in a digital way, but also quickly, you know, uh, so that comes to the authenticity, authenticity. So you, when you're doing your marketing through digital platforms, the best way is just to feature real stories, um, testimonials, uh, just show Teens uh, in events that they have participated, uh, events that they are led by teens, uh, teen science cafe events that are led by teens, um, and uh, and also share about their wins and uh, you know um, the outcomes of these events. Um, back to the point about being socially conscious, uh, you can just organize, and I, I'm pretty sure you do, but organize events and social media campaigns around uh, social issues or uh, things that they really care about. Uh, like Ibor, it was mentioned in the chat, uh, climate change, social justice, cybersecurity, AI. So those are uh, when you find the relevancy and you uh, learn how to talk in a way that is relevant to them, then it makes your marketing easy. Um, and again, and, and making it interactive, uh, ask questions, do polls, um, 
you know, reach out to teams directly and use them to market your own uh, events and, you know, ask them uh, to contribute to your marketing efforts. You know, what, are, what do they think about this specific campaign? Um, for ex as an example, with the Million Girls Moonshot, we have a youth ambassador program called the Fly Crew. So we met uh, with them, you know, once a month. We have a Discord channel where we share, hey, this, uh, this is a topic that is trending right now. Um, what do you think about this? Do you think the Million Girls Moonshot should do this, should participate? Um, so that's a great and easy way to involve them in these decisions and your marketing strategy. You can go to the next slide. Um, okay, so and tips and strategies to elevate team voice and choice. It's, you know, we, we also say what is good messaging versus bad messaging. Um, they will like, they always like to feel empowered. You know, uh, we want to use language that is relevant, uh, relevant to them, but also they don't want to see older people using slangs or jargon that they might feel, you know, it, it may not feel authentic. So it's just finding that common ground, um, you know, we tend to use some more academic language in our marketing uh, efforts. So how can we make it in a way that it is good for a 14 year old, but also for a 45 year old? So find that common ground in your messaging. Uh, again, being authentic, genuine, relatable, and just try to be as real as possible, uh, addressing their interests and their concerns. Um, include call to action. This is important. Like when you are, uh, sharing content through social media website. Like, why are you doing this? Why do, how do you want them to react? Um, what do you want them to do? Whether it's, it is to sign up to a webinar, to participate in a poll or a, on a survey, always include a call to action so they know what, uh, what is it that you're expecting from them. Um, and also, well, uh, visual and be visual and be interactive. Uh, you utilize a lot of ways of media not only photos, but videos, you know, um, some of you might use GIFs, so much, some of you might uh, play into memes, you know, I try to understand how is it that they communicate and, you know, uh, adjust your strategy to play into that game. Um, and of course, bad messaging, like we don't want to talk down to teens. Teens, you know, they live in a reality that sometimes we are not aware <laughs> Uh, you know, because they are living this every day. Um, so avoid to be patronizing or try to oversimplify your message. Like they will know when you're trying to do that. Um, don't try to be overly promotional. Uh, they know when we're trying to sell um, or we're trying to tell them. One thing that I like to say always is like, they know vegetables are good. We don't have to tell them that vegetables are good. We just need, we just need to present the vegetables in a way that they would like to eat it, to eat them. Um, so don't try to force your message. Again, be as, as honest and authentic as you can. Um, be relevant. Like they don't want to, they don't know about things that happened in, you know, 20 years ago. Uh, they might know, they might not know. Like try to uh, involve yourself in things that are happening uh, today uh, that might be relevant to them. And also um, when you do your social media or your uh, printed communication, don't make it too text heavy. Um, I remember when I was in college, if you will give me a flyer that it was this long, I was like, I don't have time to read that. I have a lot of stuff that I need to read for my assignments. So I don't have time to do this. Uh, teens nowadays, they like things, they like to read things that are direct and they can just consume quickly um, because that's how digital platforms are moving nowadays. Everything is fast, everything is quickly. Um, and you know, the interest and relevancy can change all, uh, daily. Uh, every day you see that something different is uh, trending. That doesn't mean that you're gonna change your strategy and your messaging every day to go uh, with the flow of what is trending, but uh, try to keep it uh, in a way that they would like to consume that. Next slide. And um, so how do you make a marketing plan? Uh, so these are my go-to every time that I am involving myself in a new campaign. These are the steps that I like to follow. Um, you know, what are my goals? Um, so I put, a, for example, let's all together, let's make a simple uh, marketing plan for a campaign. What are your objectives, your goals? So 
we want to increase in engagement and participation by 30%. It's always nice that you about a goal that is measurable. Um, even though if you're making it up at the beginning, always try to set that goal with uh, something that is tangible. Um, define your audience. Uh, teens will go from 13 to 18, but there are many different interests in that range. So is that big of a range that we want to target? Do you want to only do older teens that are 16 and 18? Like be specific about, you know, the age range that you want to focus. Um, what is your key message? Um, you know, is it a specific event? Is it a specific um, campaign that you want to launch? Like be specific with one to one with what is it that you want them to uh, understand and what is the message that you want to be delivered? Um, and then you create your strategy overview. You know, you can um, do a survey, you can do a poll and involve teams in the creation. Um, you can just, you know, uh, different ways to disseminate this message. And you, then from then you can just create your materials. Um, and then you create your tactics. For example, for this, uh, mock marketing uh, marketing uh, plan that we're doing here we want to do a teen ambassador program so our, our objective is to recruit a diverse group of 10 to 15 uh teens ambassador from a specific school so you know what are the activities that you need to create in order to recruit those 15 teens um who is it the specific audience that you need to reach for them to help you recruit these uh youth ambassadors. And then from there, you, uh, you keep creating your tactics. You know, step, step two will be to create your digital assets. Um, is it digital or you're gonna be marketing this in a rural area, area where you know that internet access is not, um, you know, easy. So from there, you uh, start creating your tactics and then um, your dissemination plan. And of course, set up your metrics. Uh, what is it that you want to gain from this campaign? Do you want to reach more people? Do you want to engage your existing audience? Do you want more participants? You need to be very specific with what you want. Uh, so you make sure that your campaign is successful. If you have any questions, you can unmute yourself and ask, or you can just uh, put them in the chat. I think this is my last uh, slide, right, Emily? I have one more. Okay. Perfect. So what resources can you use? Well, uh, you have two options. Everything is digital or non-digital resources. So as I mentioned at the beginning, Instagram stories, uh, most teens are not checking their feed as we millennials used to. So just create visual appealing images, just a quick video showing yourself, you know, I'm here at this event, at this place, and we're going to be talking about this or that at that time. Um, most people are on TikTok. Uh, TikTok is the platform that it moves fast. So you can just create a fun, engaging, short video that will deliver your message. You can participate in trends that are relevant to your mission. Or if they're not, you can find a way to, um, you know, um, make, make them fit your strategy. For example, at NGCP, we were at a conference. So I don't know how many of you are on TikTok or Instagram. But there is something trending right now where you said what you do and then you follow it with, of course, I'm doing this and that. So we did a video, you know, that it was like I do gender equity work because, uh, of course, I'm in a conference presenting. So we jump on a trend that it was not um, for nonprofits or gender equity work, but we find a way to make it relevant to what we do. Um, Snapchat is another way to share quick updates and behind the scenes. Um, so Snapchat is good because you can use geo filters. So if you have an event in a specific place, so you can leverage that uh, feature um, to be discoverable in that area. And also you can use the same teams to uh, spread the message. Um, YouTube is a platform that people often forget that about that is a social media, but YouTube is still strong within teens. Um, most of the teens and college students, they will still go to YouTube to learn how to do stuff. Um, so you can create videos, blogs um, that provide a behind the scenes or a sneak peek, um, telling uh, teens what they can expect from your events. Um, and lastly, Discord. Discord is a great text-based platform. 
to communicate with them directly and quickly. That's one of the um, resources that I use for the Millionaire's Moonshot uh, flight crew. And, you know, I am communicating with them all the time and the response is great. And um, they usually respond to my requests very quickly. And again, if you are in a place or you're trying to market uh, your events in a place that you know that digital is not strong or there's like a lack of access to these platforms, you can always reach out to schools and uh, try to make partnerships with uh, the schools. You can uh, distribute your flyers, posters, brochures, um, community centers and libraries. It's, sort of, uh, it's a, another great way to promote your events. You know, leave a flyer on a, bullet, on a bulletin board. Um, the tables that is old marketing, but it still works. And obviously, you know, business and cafes in the area. And um, my favorite is word of mouth. Like you will always trust something that you heard from a friend more than something that you saw online. So word of mouth is still a great way to communicate with people, whether it's teens or other audiences. So uh, once you get one teen sharing about uh, your events or resources, if there's if they are good, they will tell their friends um, and it's going to be successful. Any questions? We have one more resource we want to share, but we'll see if there are any specific marketing questions that Raisa can answer. Um, any questions about um, situations you've run into with your marketing, we're happy to sort of uh, help you on the call if, if there's anything. Alex said, how, how much, much time, time do we spend? Um, I, thank you, Emily. Uh, well, I am a marketing person, so this is what I do. But for example, for social media, I sit down every beginning of the week I know what is it that I want to talk about. And then I draft my content, you know, in four hours, I already schedule everything that I want and I have to say for the next two months. So at least for NDCP, um, two weeks a month, uh, sorry. So for NDCP and a Million Girls Moonshot, um, everything is scheduled ahead. Um, and why do I do that? Because most of the events and webinars, I already know when they're happening. So it's good for me to start promoting those two, three weeks in advance. And by me scheduling all this content in advance, it gives me time to react when something is happening or something is trending. Um, you know, if you get in the habit to create content daily and, uh, you know, you have a pop culture event that is trending and you want to jump into that and tap into that uh, relevant event, then you would not have the time to do it. So uh, for the Million Girls Moonshot, I would say, five hours a week, uh, that's how much I spend, you know, creating content and this uh, scheduling content. Right. So would you say if they're thinking about creating like some simple marketing or something for their teen science cafes that, um, doing something similar where they kind of spend some time planning at the beginning, right? Like a little bit more time, not hopefully four hours, but, um, mm -hmm. a little bit of time, um, for the next couple months or something, then that could be helpful because then they can spend, you know, less time, I guess, throughout the mm -hmm. those months focusing on it and kind of have the teens help during that time to implement the plan. But maybe it's like a little bit more time up front and then a little less time as you're implementing. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, so, um, yes, um, this question if you have a white audience already familiar with your website and social media any tips to get people to our social media media in the first place well back to emily's uh comment and this question i think what happened with us when we're trying to market in stuff it's like we sometimes get frustrated when the, when you don't see immediate uh reaction or you don't see immediate results i always said that when the message is start getting like repetitive and boring to me that's when your audience is start they start listening so don't be afraid to uh share the same event twice a week for three weeks uh or you know for a couple months don't be afraid to be sharing about your uh mission or your organization every day 
because the algorithm changes and um, you know your you might have a wide audience, but they're sometimes they're not engaged at the same time. So I would say just trying to find a rhythm that it works for you. Try to uh, find a time that works for you. For example, uh, with NDCP and Million Girls Moonshot, we know that our main audience are educators and teachers. Well, teachers are not on social media at 11 a.m. nor at 1 p.m. Like, you know, they either check their uh, email and social media very early in the morning before going to their class or after the day is over. So try to uh, disseminate your content and your, uh, you know, at times that you know your audience might be connected. Um, and also, uh, as Emily said, consistency. Uh, every day, or if you cannot be posting every day, do it every other day, but set a cadence. Uh, you can just post three times a week. And once you start seeing those results, you can see if you can do more or if you can do um, bigger or less. Uh, you know, if you started with graphic, a graphic every day and that work, but now you want to move to video, then check if two, uh, uh, two videos a week might work for you. Um, you know, strategy is a lot of uh, test. It's a lot of trial and error and learning from what you're doing. Honestly, don't be afraid to uh, uh, build a strategy and then adjust it along the way because that's what happens. Um, as I said, social media changes every day and uh, digital platforms change every day, every week. So you cannot be making all those changes, but you can just learn from it and you know try to um, tweak and adjust your strategy. Kristen said, some cafes have dedicated marketing teams. How can they advocate for these practices if they are already not in use? Um, well, how do I, how do I advocate for practices? Uh, it's just data. Um, study your audience. Um, believe in the content and the message that you have and just start doing it. Um, these are practices, you know, that are based on data across platforms, uh, stuff that is tested, that it works. So if they're not already in use, start by using them. I think that's my best advice. I also think that it's, and I think this applies to everything here, right, is that this is a lot and there are so many social media platforms, digital platforms, there are many different things you can try. Um, and likely you don't have time to try them all, um, especially if mm -hmm. this is something that's, um, you know, not your main focus of your work, but a, a piece of it. So I think advocating for one thing to try with some data to back that up um, might be a good place to start, whether you have a dedicated marketing team or not. Um, so that you can try something and see how it goes. And then as Raisa said, if you need to pivot or try something else, um, you can do that as well. But, um, you likely yeah. don't have the ability to try all of these things at the same time. Um, so figuring out, uh, kind of going back to the, your audience and what might appeal to them, um, try finding one that, that you could try something new, you know, that you could try might be a good place to start. Yeah, that's a great point. I always tell people that like, you don't have to be everywhere. Uh, there's no need for you to be on every platform. And if you don't have the time to manage it, if you don't have the uh, um, capabilities to create content for all platforms, there's a lot of platforms. So I always tell people speak to and start with those two. Um, for example, if we have the data that teens like to be in Snapchat, uh, Instagram and TikTok, just pick one. Pick one that you know that you can create content uh, for that specific platform. So if you don't have the time, for example, NDCP, we are we are strictly remote. So I don't have the uh, capabilities of creating videos unless we are at a conference. So we're not on TikTok because it's not it's not doable for us. So just pick a platform that you can you can create content and that you can manage. And after you pick two, if those two are successful, then try to add a third one until you know, you'll keep growing your audience in different platforms. Okay, I'm gonna move on, I think, just to the last resource we wanna highlight for you all, but we will likely have some more time at the end. So if you have additional questions, feel free to add them to the chat. 
Thanks, Raisa and Candid. So we just wanted to share one more resource, which is a project that we work on at the National Girls Collaborative Project um, and is a uh, resource that is funded by the National Science Foundation um, called Science Near Me. And Science Near Me is a free website um, that provides people with a searchable database of STEM opportunities from all sorts of providers. Um, and we are studying how the public uses Science Near Me. Uh, we have a research team at Oregon State University who is uh, studying how a digital tool like Science Near Me can help the public engage in more um, STEM opportunities, how they um, move across domains, so areas of interest in STEM. Um, and we're also studying how to improve the site to increase public um, engagement. So here's just a quick screenshot of the site. Um, we did want to invite you, if you are interested in becoming a partner and adding your Teen Science Cafe um, opportunities to Science Near Me, we would love that. Um, there are teens that use the site, um, which we know through some of the data um, analytics that we um, that are publicly available on the site. Um, but you can also use the site um, to browse STEM events that are happening near you. Um, I will put in the chat in a moment the, the link, but it's sciencenearme.org. Um, and then as a partner, if you were to add your science cafes, um, you would get some amazing data, um, including uh, where people are finding your events, um, if they're clicking through from Science Near Me to your website. Um, you can see demographics of the people looking at your events. So these are some great marketing tools um, if you become a partner. Um, and we also just wanted to highlight some of the benefits of Science Near Me. Um, it does offer broader exposure for your events and programs. Um, there are multiple ways to connect your Science Cafes to Science Near Me. Um, you can have a customized version of Science Near Me that you could add to your website, or you can just um, fill out a simple form to add your cafes to the website. Um, there's some really simple kind of low lift options and then some more technical options. Um, you can also see what other STEM organizations are offering, what kinds of events. Um, if you are looking for other topics for your um, cafes, there are some great um, sort of resources and other events you can uh, learn from. And then, as I mentioned, the data analytics. If you're looking for more marketing tools and marketing um, analytics to see um, what sort of events are um, getting traction, to see who's looking at your events, um, all of that is available in this free tool. Um, and then we also provide uh, support on the project team and will um, help you tap into a national community of other STEM uh, partners who are adding their events to Science Near Me. So if you are interested in this, um, you can email us at info at sciencenearme.org, which I'll put in the chat. Um, and then we also encourage you to just check out the site if you wanna browse STEM events that are happening near you. Um, yes, Amy, it is a free, absolutely free resource. Um, so we understand a budget of free very, um, very well. That is something we also often work on. So, uh, it's a free resource funded by the National Science Foundation. So, um, if you'd like to get involved, um, and, you know, get your, your science cafes in there, we would, um, absolutely love to, to connect with you. So you can always email us. Um, and that is all of our slides. Um, you don't have to raise your hand if you have a question. I'll pull the slides down, actually. But um, we have a little bit more uh, time. If anyone has any questions, we can answer um, about marketing or any of the resources we've shared. Okay, if there aren't any questions, we'll probably end a little bit early, but I'll turn it back over to Kristen to close this out. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much for, again, for joining us today, everybody. Um, we'll be posting this uh, webinar on our YouTube channel uh, soon. And I just want to thank everyone again at um, National Girls Collaborative Project for joining us today uh, for all those helpful tips. And um, again, please check out uh, Science Near Me. It is a free resource, um, and it will definitely be beneficial for your cafes to be located on, on that resource as well. Thank you, everybody. Have a good rest of your day.